chapter 21, starting with verse 19. Luke chapter 21, verse 19. Can we just talk to God for a moment as we're getting settled? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this day. We pray, God, that you would just speak to our minds, speak to our spirits today, God. Hide me behind your cross. Let the people not hear me, but just hear your voice, God. You can speak to us all in an individual way. Speak to our spirits today as we dwell into your word. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I want to encourage all of you before I begin today to uh, bring in some shoes. Now, they, can be, they don't have to be new shoes. They can be old shoes. We're working with a group called Dreams Academy. Can you repeat after me? Say Dreams Academy. Dreams Academy is a group of young men from the inner city, from the suburbs that are coming together. They're learning specific skills. Um, this are pre predominantly black males, ages 10 to 15. They meet in the spring and the summer. This is in your bulletin. And they experience activities and lessons on life. And so we're working with this ministry to help them out. If we can bring in a bunch of shoes, they can turn this into a special uh, international um, organization that will give them money for scholarships. Of course, it costs money for Dreams Academy. And so we want to help them financially and also help them get these shoes so that they can bless these young men. So if you have some shoes, if you have some extra shoes, any of these ladies out here have some extra shoes? A lot of them told me no at the 830. If you have a few extra shoes, just take it out your husband's closet. But we need some shoes, so make sure there's a, a, a basket out in the, out in the foyer, uh, a box, and we want you to bring that in the next couple Sundays. We want to try to bless their life, uh, at least by Easter. Can you do that for me? Just say amen. Amen. We want to do outreach. Can somebody say outreach? Outreach. And so that's our outreach uh, for this spring. We're going to help these young men. Uh, with this Dreams Academy. So let's begin today. I want to, uh, again, we're loving into the book of Luke, but I just want to start with a story. <clears throat> you know, back in the day, I was a varsity football player for Befford High School. Befford High School. I was a linebacker, and my job as a linebacker on the football team was to tackle the man with the football was to tackle the man with the ball. So my job was always to deliver the blow. I love the impact. I love delivering the blow. I enjoyed my position as linebacker on the varsity team at Bedford High School, if you will. And I remember those practices in the heat of summer. We called those practices two-a-days. We practiced twice a day in the summer heat, and we would do certain drills to help us learn our position in football, to help us actually earn our spot on the team. However, though my position was to tackle the man with the ball, I also had to learn how it felt to be tackled myself. See, the strategy was in order for me to be good at my position, I had to learn what it felt like to be on the other side. So we would run these drills where they would actually give me the ball and I would have to run it to defenders, two other players, and their job was to put me on the ground and knock me out and tackle me. I hated those drills with a passion. Everything was fun when I was delivering the blow, but everything got real and everything got uncomfortable when all the blows were coming at me. I just want to ask you the question, what do you do when life knocks you down? How do you respond when you get the call that was once your reality is now a thing of your past? How do you respond when somebody you love is no longer in the land of the living? How do you respond when you get the call that surgery is what you need? How do you respond when they tell you, I don't want you to come into work tomorrow? How do you respond when you get knocked down? You know, a good text in the Bible comes from Luke chapter 21, verse 9. The King James Version says this, and can you repeat after me? Say, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Now, the New International Version says, stand firm and you will win life. So how do we get to the win when we're in a losing situation? Here in the Bible, we are being taught to possess peace and let nothing disturb 
or distress us. I, I don't know about you, but it's hard to stop things from bothering me that actually bother me. The truth is, at the sight of adversity, many people like to give up easily. Instead of persevering, they get all bent out of shape. Some people go through a problem so long, they just give up. Some people say, I've always had this sickness. I, I guess I'll never get well. Some people say, the odds have always been against me. I don't think I'll ever get ahead. Many people talk about my relationship, my, my marriage, my family, the things I'm going through have been so messed up for so long, there's no way it's going to get better. Some people will let life stab them and then they will take over and twist the handle of the knife. However, I need you to know this this morning. I need you to know that if you want God to deliver in your life, if you want to get out of your situation, if you, if, if you need him to get you out of what you're going through, you've got to stand up no matter what. So today I just want to speak from the subject of standing firm in every situation. I know you're thinking it's hard. I know you're thinking it's easier to say than to do, but, but it all starts with your attitude. Somebody say attitude. attitude. Your attitude is the avenue to your victory. Your attitude is the, is, is, is the avenue to your next level to get over what you're going through. David is a good example of this in 1 Samuel. He was, out of his, he was out with his men one day patrolling on the outskirts of his city. And while he was gone with his men, with his soldiers, his family, were, the, all their families were attacked. Homes were burned down. Possessions were taken and stolen. Women and children were kidnapped. The men, were, the men came back to that city and they were crying and they were weeping and they were thinking about all kind of crazy stuff. They were thinking about getting rid of David. And, but, but think about this. What did David do in that situation? The Bible says David encouraged himself and strengthened himself in the Lord. What does that mean? It means this. David said, I'm not going to let the enemy kill my spirit. I'm going to change my attitude. Can somebody say attitude? And see, David ended up inspiring the men to fight back, and they ended up defeating the enemy. So the question is, in this story, why did they win? See, they won because he had the right attitude. See, you've got to find strength even in adversity. And the first way that you find strength through adversity is by possessing the right attitude because your attitude determines your altitude, your how high you're going to go, your how far you're going to go. Having the right attitude is just saying to yourself, as David says, sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. It's just saying to yourself, I may be going through it on the outside, but I'm not going to let it destroy me on the inside. I don't know who I'm talking to, but even though you've got something going on on the outside, you can't let it destroy your soul. Now back to our text, Luke chapter 21, 19. In your, in your patience, possess ye your souls. In the midst of your situation, your soul has got to remain firm. Say firm. Now I have to admit something. It's never easy to be patient. It's not easy to stand firm. It's easier said than done. You know, a good example of this, of this challenge of standing firm, I remember when my son was younger and we would, we would love to bring him into the sanctuary and I remember, but, but when he come in, he could never sit still. He'd be all over the place and he'd, he'd run all around and he'd love to jump on the seat and he'd love to stand up on the seat and we'd always be trying to get him to sit down. Every time we came to church, that's all it was about, trying to get him to sit down. So as soon as I'd get his little rump in the seat, 10 seconds later, he'd jump right back up up and down and up and down he'd jump up and down and so we could not get him still so finally what I did was I just stuck my hand on his head and held him down and I said sit your tail down and I held him down and, and when I did that he did one of the craziest things to me he just grinned and he looked up at me and he said I may be sitting down on the outside but I'm jumping up and down on the inside 
See, that's how we got to be as Christians. No matter what we're going through, no matter what they said to you, no matter what you got going on on the outside, we can't let nobody or nothing steal our joy on the inside. See, we got to stand up and stand firm in the Lord no matter what, regardless of what happened, even if your dog died. Even if your money is low, even if you're sick, even if you found out things are not going as planned, no matter what, you've got to keep it in your head that you don't have to stay down because as believers, we are called to an attitude of faith. Somebody say faith. What does faith say? Faith says this, I'm not going to lapse into negative thinking. I'm not going to lapse into thinking in the wrong direction. Faith says this, I won't complain. Faith says, I'm not going to complain. Faith says, I'm not going to sit here on the sidelines and let life happen to me. I'm going to live life the way that God intended it to be. Faith says this. Faith says, I'm not going to blame God. I'm going to thank God no matter what. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the bad times and I thank God for the good times because if I didn't have the bad times, I wouldn't know to feel a certain type of way when good times were happening in my life. We need to thank God for the good, the bad, and the ugly because I know because I know that he's working it out for reasons I may not understand on today. But he's working it out for reasons that I'm going to be praising and shouting about on tomorrow. See, I want to ask you, is there anybody in this place that has a reason to thank God? Do you have a reason to thank God through the storm? Do you have a reason to thank God through the rain? Do you have a reason to thank God even when you're sick? Do you have a reason to thank God no matter what you're going through? Because my attitude of faith statement says, and this is a new thing, your faith statement, your attitude of faith statement, it says, God, I may not understand this, but I know that you're still in control. And that's how you got to live your life. I may not understand it, but you're still in control. And see, my faith statement says this, I remember what you said. See, sometimes you got to remember what God said. A lot of times we fall into a situation and we forgot what God said about it. That's why we've got to know our Bible. That's why you've got to know the Word of God. We're not just saying you need to go to a, a, a Wednesday Bible study or noon Bible study or go in between services just to go. You go because you learn to recall. Say recall. You've got to learn to bring some, some verses back in your mind. Bring it back from the inside to your outside that's under attack and say, Lord, I remember what you said. You said you've never put more on me than I can bear. I don't know about you. I'm glad that he'll never put more on me than I can bear. And you said there's something to me in the Bible that I will never forget. It's found in Romans 8.28. Keep this in your back pocket. You said all things work together for my good. It's good to know that all things do work together for your good. And you said this, Lord. I'm talking to the Lord right now. Can I talk to him while I'm talking to you? Genesis 50, chapter 20. You will take this evil that's coming to me and turn it around and use it for my advantage. Use it for my good. And you said this. This is what I like. You make my enemy my footstool. You make my enemy, that thing that was up against me, that person that wanted to see me knocked down and knocked out, you make my enemy my footstool. Now, in order for you to step on and step up to something better, you got to realize that it's going to be in front of you. So, so that enemy that's in front of you is ordained. It needs to be in front of you and get in your way. First, in order for it to be used as your step stool. So sometimes well, you don't have to worry when you got something up against you because at the end of the day, it's preparing to be your step stool. I don't know what you're going through, but it's being prepared to be your step stool. I don't know about you, but I got some stuff in front of me that I'm ready to step over. I got some people in front of me that I'm, that I'm not just going to step on. I'm going to step over. I got some challenges that may be against me today, but I'm going to step over and step over it on tomorrow because I'm walking by faith and not by sight. 
And I believe that when he said he was going to do it, when he said it was going to happen, it may not come when I think it should, but it will always be right on time. Tell somebody to stand firm. So again, God is saying in the midst of what you're going through, in the midst, in the middle of it, stand up. And stand firm. When, when things are going bad on the outside, you got to stand up on the inside. Now here's a verse I want you to remember. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. New International Version. Therefore put on the full armor of God. So that when the days of evil come, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand. Now, I love that verse. Here's the advice. you got to be prepared because what you're up against is far more than you can handle on your own. You got to take all the help that you can get, every weapon that God has issued, so that when the enemy comes at you, you'll be okay. Now, what is a weapon your relationship with Jesus what does a relationship with Jesus give you if you're here today and you don't have a relationship to Jesus don't leave today without that relationship what are the weapons that you get when you have a relationship with Jesus when you put on the whole armor of God the Bible says you get righteousness say righteousness you get a sense of being moral you get a moral compass and doing the right thing what else do you get you get peace say peace Peace is mental calm. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I need a little bit of peace. You get also the ability to have faith. Somebody say faith. The ability to see things that aren't there. I don't know about you, but it's my faith that carries me through the day. I may not be able to see it, but sometimes I just got to believe that God will bring it to me in the future. And the last thing you get is salvation. Say salvation. You get help from the consequences of your actions. And if you can work on these weapons, you will stand firm. See, the, the point I'd also like to make is that God rewards those who stand firm. God rewards those who stand up and stand firm. You know, I was, I was talking to this lady the other day, and she was the epitome of what I'm talking about today. She had a six-figure job. She had a prestigious position, and all of a sudden, her job decided to downsize. Did she come to me crying and acting up? No, she came to me and said, I'm all happy as get up. And I was like, why? She said, because even though I lost my job, I can't stop being excited because I can't wait, wait to see what God has for me on the other side. See, standing firm is about believing in what God will do, what God can do, and what God is doing in your life, and what God is going to do in your life tomorrow. I want to ask, is there one, maybe two, maybe three people that know what God can do in your life, what God is going to do, what God can do, what God is doing? He's moving in your life. And let me tell you today, the world didn't give you the joy that Jesus can give you on the inside. And the world can take your joy away. No man can steal your joy. Joy stays with you as long as you don't give it away. See, a lot of times we give people consent to take away our joy. But you don't, but that's the only way you lose your joy is if you give consent. Sometimes you gotta stand firm and say, listen, you didn't give me this joy and you can't take it away. God gave me this joy. God gave me this demeanor. God gave me what I have on the inside. And I don't care what you're doing on the outside, I'm gonna stand firm no matter what. Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas did this very thing in the Bible. They did it very well. God, they, they basically got accused of being troublemakers just because some folk didn't like the message that they were spreading. So Paul and Silas, they were called troublemakers. Basically, the police beat them up and threw them in jail. Did they complain or 
Did they sit in the corner and did they mope? Did they talk about somebody stole my joy? Did they cry? No, the Bible says in the midst of their pain, in the midst of all that they were going through, they were praising God. They were still standing firm. And see, the Bible says this. This is my, one of my favorite verses. It says, at midnight, at midnight, while they were singing and praising unto God, suddenly there was an earthquake. See, there's something about your praise. See, there's something that happens when you know how to be a good praiser. There's something that happens when you can do something at midnight and start praising and shouting unto God. The story says suddenly there was an earthquake and the prison doors fled open and the chains fell off their wrists. I don't know about you, but somebody needs the prison doors of your life to be open and the chains to fall off your wrists and all you got to do is give God some praise. You've got to give him a big praise. You've got to give him a large praise. You got to understand that God is willing to see are you willing? Are you ready for him to show you a way out? Are you willing to stand firm until your victory comes? Are you willing to stand firm until your deliverance comes are you willing to stand firm until your breakthrough comes are you willing to stand firm until your healing comes if, if, think about this even if you're broke you're busted disgusted you're tired at the end of the day God says you've got to stand up and stand firm don't live under your circumstances. You got to live above it. And I just want to deliver the message to you today that if you show your faith, God will show up in your life. If you show him your faith, God's going to show up. If you stand up, God will sit them down. If you stand up in spite of, that's when God will show up. When you do your part, I want to tell you, he'll surely do his. He'll do this. He'll be able to change some things in your life supernaturally. Because I want to tell you, we serve a God that's bigger than your circumstances. We serve a God that's greater than what's in front of you. We serve a God that's larger than your enemy. We serve a God that's more powerful than anything you go up against. We serve a God that looks beyond your faults and supplies your every single need. We serve a God that though things are going on on the outside, on the inside, he can keep you well. He can keep you up. He can help you to stand firm. And no matter how many times you get knocked down, remember God is watching you. God is watching you. And he's watching your resolve. And when he sees that you're doing all that you can, when he sees that you're giving maximum effort to stand, that's when God will step in. That's when God or do some things that you can't do. That's when God will show you that he was right there with you. I don't know about you, but God is right there with you in the midst of the storm. God's right there with you in the midst of all you go through. So after you've done every single thing that you can, I want you to keep standing. Can you keep standing today? Can you stand today? Can you stand today? Can you stand firm today? Let's stand firm today. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. Bow your heads. Let's just bow our heads in a word of thanks unto God that he gives us the ability to stand firm. How do you stand firm is another question. You've got to learn to be happy. You've got to learn to be happy. Many people allow their circumstances to be the guide of their happiness. But you've got to learn to be happy. The Bible says in Psalms 51.10, it says you need to ask God to create in me a pure heart and a steadfast spirit within me. If you practice having a pure heart and a positive spirit no matter what, you'll live a healthier, more productive life. And that's what life is all about. It's about being productive. It's about being healthy. Studies have shown this, that the more positive you are, 
the less likely you'll last in a bad situation. And why is that? Because God made you to be determined and not defeated. God made you to stand no matter what. He wants you to stand on his promises. He wants you to stand on the joy that he put in your heart that the world can't take away. Don't give away that joy today. Stand firm. No matter what you're going through, you need to stand firm. I want you to grab your neighbor by the hand that's next to you. Grab your neighbor by the hand as we just talk to God in a moment of solace and a moment of thanks. As I speak today, if you're here today, and maybe you don't have the right kind of relationship with God that has enabled you to stand firm. Maybe you haven't asked Jesus to come into your life. Maybe you don't really know within your spirit where you'll be if you were to die on tomorrow. I want to tell you, you need to know that destination. You need to have a relationship with the one that's available to you by the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus took on the penalty. He took on the substitution for our sins. So we have access to what we call eternal life. We have access to heaven. We have access to his redeeming grace, his redeeming mercy. Maybe you've done something wrong, but you have access to his forgiveness. And I want you to tap into that today. So if you haven't accepted Christ into your heart as everyone's praying and as his heads are bowed, I'd like for you to just squeeze your neighbor by the hand. Just squeeze your neighbor by the hand. If somebody squeezed your hand, I just want you to begin praying for them right now. Just talk to God about them right now. If somebody squeezed your hand, just squeeze your neighbor by the hand. Don't, don't feel any worry. Don't feel any doubt. Just squeeze that neighbor by the hand. Today is your day. Today is your day for healing. Today is your day for breakthrough. Today is your day for prayer. And I pray for you today if you don't have a church home. Maybe you've been searching or just visiting or just coming every once in a while. I want to tell you, you need a place that you can call home. Maybe you don't want to be characterized as just a member. That's okay. We just want you to be a part of the fold. We just want to know that you're with a church family. We want to be your church family. So if you don't have a church home, I just want you to squeeze your neighbor by the hand right now. Just squeeze your neighbor right now. And here, I want to speak to someone else today. Maybe you've had some difficulty standing firm. Maybe you've had some tough times that have happened in your life. I want you to squeeze your neighbor by the hand right now. We're just going to pray for you right now. And if somebody squeezed your hand, I just want you to pray for them right now. Just pray for them right now. And I'm going to ask if somebody did squeeze your hand, I just want you to raise it. Nobody's looking up right now. I just want you to raise that hand in the air. Just raise it up high. Just raise it up high. I see you. I see you. It's okay. Just raise it up high. We're just praying for you right now. And I want you to ask that person that you have that hand held high. If maybe they haven't received Christ, tell them you'll walk up with them. We believe that you should come forward publicly and just, just, just go ahead and just give yourself to Christ. Today is a great time to do it. You can walk up right now with the person next to you. They'll walk with you. If there's somebody here today and you want to receive Christ, you can do that right now. Maybe you want to join the church or maybe you need special prayer. I'm going to open the doors to God's house and let you know that he's able. And all you've got to do is say yes. Will you say yes today? If you'll say yes, I want you to walk up. There's somebody here that's willing to say yes. And if somebody's next to you, walk up with them today. If you're here today, the doors of my father's house are open. And we want to say that God is able. So why don't you come today? Yes, come on, come on, come on. If you're here today, come on, come on. Come on, give God some praise for these that are coming. Come on, right to the front. Yes. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give God some praise for this young sister that's coming. He's able. Come on, from the back, from the front. Come on up. Come on up. We want to offer Christ to you. God is able. God is able. Yes. He's able. Let's bow 
to pray for those that are here. Maybe you didn't want to walk up. I want to let you know there's a card in the pew. And we want you to fill that out. You can join the church that way. You can have special prayer that way. You can accept Christ that way. And we'll get back to you. And I want you to say this prayer with me. Everyone can say it together. And you can pray with me here.